Born to Raise Hell is the movie Steven Seagal has been dying to make his entire career. Are you listening? It was his chance to finally tell the world, yeah, sure, whatever, are we done yet? It starts with just a taste of the high-level writing you've come to expect from Sensei Seagal. Where's your friend Costello? Where's your fucking warrant? This is my warrant, bitch. And it's all downhill from there. <laughs> I have no idea if we're supposed to believe this narration is actually Seagal. Evil exists in every man. But it has nothing to do with the movie anyways, so who the f*** cares? I find it easier to embrace it. The movie takes place in Romania because it's really cheap to film there, and that's far more important than making sense. Great minds think alike. So Seagal made up a fake agency where the US can go to foreign countries and bust low-level drug dealers. The only thing dumber than that is their initials are IDTF. This bloated mess pounding on your door shouting I'm DTF sounds fucking terrifying. Anyways, Seagal's partner was killed six months ago. I will find the man responsible and bring them to justice. Not only does he not find the killer, but at no point in the movie does he even try and it's never mentioned again. What the f***? This douchey looking guy is the main villain, Castell. He's a drug smuggler and also does home invasions with his highly efficient team. Everyone has a role and his is to rape the wife while everyone else does all the work. I don't know why they need that on their team or why he gets the same split as everyone else, but it's a Seagal movie and reasons aren't his style. So Seagal gets a new partner and they go out on their first bus together while the movie continues its downward spiral into complete nonsense. First, they bust in these double red doors and then somehow enter through a single white door. Then this guy keeps his motorcycle in the kitchen and then tries to drive away through closed fucking doors. But don't worry because Seagal's fast enough to catch a motorcycle on foot. And then this guy, where the fuck did he come from? He just magically appears in the kitchen and tries to take out the entire SWAT team with a fucking wrench. Seagal's really pissed at the new guy. You gotta be on the ball. Fuck is wrong with you, boy? But come on, this entire operation was a complete shit show. You call this room safe? You don't check the cupboard? You're putting everybody's life at risk. Check the cupboard? What the fuck are you even talking about? Is this some cookie thing or something? I love the fuck out of cookies. This is Dimitri. He's a drug dealing murderer. But he's also Russian in a Seagal movie, which means he has a heart of gold. Seagal arrests him when he finds him with a gun whose serial number matches other guns found at a crime scene. Same as the ones that we found at Sorens. This lets you know that Seagal has no f***ing idea how serial numbers on guns work. What happens next is the subject of intense debate. Some say that at that moment, Dimitri realized this movie was going to kill any chance of a legitimate acting career. Others say Seagal's sick comeback You should be careful who you are as. I'll be careful was just too much for him to handle. All we know for sure 
is that Seagal movies are really fucking stupid and Dimitri slammed his own head into the window and knocked himself out. Now Seagal gives us some of his patented pointless filler so he can stretch his 12 minutes of movie into 90 minutes and everyone can continue pretending like he's making real movies. First, him and his partner are undercover in a van by a park. That's seriously their entire plan. Nobody's wired, no surveillance. They're literally just sitting there. And they're so fucking bad at sitting in a van that they somehow get found out. <laughs> so Seagal does what Seagal does and unleashes a fury of hand and forearm slaps. <laughs> But they still need to stretch the movie out just a little bit longer, so we immediately get another fight scene involving the exact same people. You still remember me? Of course he does, it literally just happened. What the f was that? Is that supposed to be a punch? You guys are pathetic. Now we get another raid this time on Castell's dash pad. Because of how terribly it went before with that whole cupboard fiasco. You don't check the cupboard? The fuck is wrong with you, boy? The plan this time is to just execute everybody. Any questions? Of course, they fuck everything up from the very beginning when the guy with the battering ram forgets he has it and kicks the door instead. Then Seagal instantly starts shooting and doesn't even look at what the f he's firing at. After slaughtering everyone, they take this guy alive on accident, but not before he had a chance to call Costell. Yeah. He warned him about the raid and to stay away, right? Of course not. He called him to come help and he fucking does. Stash pad now. Only he helps the dumbest way possible by doing a drive by. <laughs> and the only one that actually gets hit is him. <laughs> then, in an amazing display of police work, while this guy is slowly dying on the ground, everyone just walks away like it's not their fucking problem. Then the next day, they're actually discussing if Castell was involved in the drive-by or not. You think it's this Castell character? First, it's really distracting how whoever's dubbing Seagal's voice has an echo. Well, like I told you, man, I put about three rounds. While nobody else does. Locals came up short on a grid search for the Range Rover. And second, of course it was fucking Castell. His window was down and he looked right at you. You guys are so fucking stupid. One million percent of him. The next day, Castell goes to his club to grab a bunch of money for some reason. And Seagal and his partner just happen to drop by at the exact same time. Castell shoots Seagal's partner and then tries to run, but somehow Seagal manages to keep up with him while slowly waddling forward. Since it's in Seagal's contract that he doesn't do stairs, instead of following him up there, they show him moving through this exact same spot three times. He then magically appears at the window then in the next shot is just getting there in the first place. Seagal's eye for detail is legendary. They didn't have the budget to CGI Seagal through this window, so Castell gets away. And now Seagal has to avenge two dead partners. Costell's gang then kills Dimitri's wife for some reason 
and Dmitry handles it the Russian Mafia way by running to the police. But it's a Seagal movie, so don't worry, it gets dumber. I don't get it. First, Seagal's blaming this guy for his own f up at the club. You guys better get your sh together, I'm gonna get somebody else. You understand? Whatever, jackass. But it doesn't matter because that's not even the dumb part. The dumb part is Dimitri goes to Seagal to see if he wants to assassinate Costell's gang together. You get Costell, and I'm allowed to take revenge on his man Dada for my wife's death. While that sounds really fucking stupid, just remember who wrote this piece of shit. So of course he's all in. First, they go after Costell's right-hand man. He tries to drive away, but Seagal does the smart thing and jumps on the hood. He tries to shake Seagal off, but the extra weight makes that impossible. Then, before Seagal has a clear shot on the guy literally right in front of him, he crashes into this pole that then disappears. Seagal's work is now done here and we find ourselves back at the beginning of the movie and it's all just as stupid this is my warm, bitch. as it was back then. But don't worry, because what comes next is the most ridiculous and incoherent nonsense Seagal has ever come up with. Even worse than right here, where he shoots his shotgun into the ground as he's standing up. Costell clearly sees that they're right outside the door before immediately forgetting and sitting down to do drugs. I have no idea what Seagal is even doing here. Is he trying to shoot the door and just keeps missing? Is he trying to cut the door out with his fucking shotgun? Why? Just kick the door, you goddamn idiot. And look, the fucking hinges are on the outside of the door for some inexplicable reason. You could have just taken the door off in less time and you wouldn't have wasted all your ammo. After he finally kicks the door, guess where Costell was? Right fucking behind it. The door doesn't even have a latch. He could have just pushed it open that entire time. I need to move on because this entire door situation is really pissing me off. So after your typical Seagal fight, where Seagal just flails his arms while his body double and opponent do all the work, <laughs> Costell grabs a gun. Where does he grab it from? He creates it out of fucking nothing. What the fuck? Was Seagal watching Die Hard when he wrote this? We saw Costell's back many times and it would have really stuck out if he had a fucking gun tape there. Whatever, it's almost over. Let's just power through this final insult. Seagal walks up to Dimitri, who's playing chess against himself, and checkmates him in one move. Only a brilliant strategist could beat me in one move. Fuck you and fuck you. No, he didn't. The White Queen is right there, which means Black was in check, so that was an illegal move. How do neither of you know this? I swear to God, you are both so fucking stupid. Funny you should say that. It's exactly what I was thinking. So Seagal makes the Russian drug dealer kiss his ass. You would have made a good Spitzner. No, he wouldn't. And round and round we go with this money laundering scheme that Seagal calls his acting career. This is my warm bitch. 